I'm here to discuss this very interesting project that I did uh, as an accredited registrar at Southern Health. It's looking at the poor prognosis of uh, these uh, transverse atypical subtrochanteric neck of femur fractures as a, a result of uh, prolonged bisphosphonate therapy. And this was a study conducted by the orthopedic department at Southern Health, and uh, we had no external sponsorship or funding. And the background to this is uh, that we all know that bisphosphonates have been the gold standard uh, treatment, part of the gold standard treatment for osteoporosis. <coughs> and uh, its action uh, via uh, halting of osteoclastic activity and uh, thus slowing uh, the bone resorptive process. And it's got good evidence published to show its, uh, its benefit for preventing primary and secondary uh, osteoporotic fractures. However, uh, there have been recent evidence, uh, uh, reaching up to a uh, time from 2005, initially with case reports, and then uh, uh, quite recently in 2011, more, much larger population-based studies, uh, randomized control trials, are showing that the, uh, the prolonged use of bisphosphonates are associated with these, you know, uh, quite difficult atypical fractures. And the proposed uh, sequelae of events being initially you get halting of osteoclastic activity. However, uh, with prolonged use, say, past five years, you get uh, uh, halting of osteoblastic activity as well, thus creating this you know, static frozen bone uh, that are very difficult to heal, and uh, they accumulate microfractures over time, and uh, thus susceptible to uh, very easily being fractured. And so we looked at, so we had a retrospective uh, case control study design looking at the Adena Hospital uh, trauma database and uh, in the last two years and we identified uh, 17 of these you know, fractures that we defined as you know, atypical. And uh, we followed them up over uh, six months and then if they didn't unite, we followed them up until we actually saw union. So this is an example of what we are discussing. On the left, uh, you can see what we call a typical uh, subtrochanteric neck of femur fracture, fracture involving the metaphysis below the level of the greater and the trico, uh, lesser trochanters. And on the right, you see this you know, uh, very atypical, pathological-looking uh, transverse fracture uh, below the level of the uh, trochanters that's sort of uh, not consistent with the, uh, uh, with the mechanism of injury to uh, uh, normal biomechanics of, uh, uh, of the bone. And these are some, uh, some examples of uh, other atypical fractures that we've noticed uh, in our study from the RK series. And so we looked at patient demographics, we looked at whether they were on bisphosphonates, we looked at the duration they were on, and we looked at the method of fixation, and we followed them up until we saw union. And uh, just looking at the preliminary data, it was quite clearly obvious that uh, there's a, in the atypical fracture group, we noted that 16 of these patients out of the 17 were uh, using bisphosphonate. In our control group uh, of other subtrochanteric neck of fractures, uh, only one person was on bisphosphonate. And, the, it posed, and these fractures posed a very difficult challenge in fixation. It was a very difficult reduction, and it was very difficult to achieve good compression. And uh, there were quite a lot of uh, very large deforming forces acting on these fractures, and, uh, and on top of that, uh, the, uh, the bone had very little uh, capacity to heal. So uh, methods of fixation, mostly uh, these fractures were fixed with cephalomedullary devices. However, we did have one case that was fixed with a uh, dynamic hip screw um, uh, with lag screw and plate fixation. So looking at our follow-up data, um, at three months, um, it'd be, uh, out of seven, uh, 16 of these fractures, seven of them uh, showed uh, no evidence of union, of, uh, of you know, attempting to unite. At six months, five of them were still in non-union, and uh, they were ref uh, referred on for a reoperation uh, with, with graft, bone grafting. So this is a summary of our 16 cases, uh, listing the method of fixation. We did uh, get all 16 cases to unite, and you can see um, that uh, case 6 was, uh, was especially difficult, along with case number 1, requiring multiple operations, it's a very long hospital stay, 
uh, for these patients with a lot of very, very significant morbidity. And uh, it's clear that you know five out of sixteen patients is actually in fact a very high number uh, to have not have united at six months. And I couldn't find a very clear-cut comparison in literature comparing other subtracanter neck of fractures, except there's a Cochrane review that says you know 99, uh, six, at six months uh, all extra capsular hip fractures fixed with uh, with these long nails um, uh, unite. So looking at uh, two simple case studies that we've done, this is a relatively simple case, uh, simpler revision, if you say. 86-year-old um, lady uh, with bisphosphonates for five years who's at a mechanical fall uh, after a very minimal trauma fall. She actually complains of, uh, complained of uh, leg uh, prodromal pain and actually collapsing. And uh, she presented with a, uh, a fracture that uh, looked like that. We've got fixed to it a uh, uh, cephalomedullary nail. Uh, with, an, uh, with the cable attempt at getting, um, uh, stopping the deforming forces and at, uh, attempt at getting some reduction. No bone graft um, was used at this point, I have to add. At three months, at six months, very little evidence of union, and she was reoperated with a change of nail and, uh, and bone graft, which uh, in, in her case produced good results, and uh, she uh, got discharged. Uh, attempted union. This was a case that required 10 operations. A uh, 45 year old lady with a background history of rheumatoid arthritis uh, on methotrexate and, and corticosteroids, and she had a very um, uh, a minimal trauma fall, uh, and she presented with this fracture. And uh, she was initially fixed uh, with this uh, cephalomedullary nail, and at 12 months, <laughs> even after attempted dynamization, uh, she st uh, showed no uh, evidence of union. And at 20 months, she presented with uh, the failure of this implant with this fractured uh, nail, which got revised to a blade plate and bone grafting. And four months later, she presented with a uh, failure of this device as well. Unfortunately, at this time, uh, she, uh, it was complicated by uh, also infection. And since then, she's had multiple admissions to the hospital for debridement procedures, uh, washouts, and uh, for antibiotic therapy. And at that time, she was fixed with this long nail and grafting. And uh, at finally, at 40 months, uh, she's doing well. Her infection's controlled. She's had this nail changed once again after that uh, and, and dynamized. And uh, she's finally achieved union, and she's doing quite well. So a conclusion to draw that are we uh, managed to show that you know bisphosphonates are definitely associated. Uh, well, there's a consistent association with atypical fractures uh, and bisphosphonate, long-term bisphosphonate use, and uh, it, it supports current evidence. And these fractures show a very difficult, uh, it's a technically challenging uh, reduction and uh, in achieve and also achieving compression. And uh, for the patients involved, there was a very high degree of morbidity, and uh, they required multiple operations. And uh, as you can see, even out of the five revisions, two of them were very complicated with very prolonged hospital stay. And uh, so our study advocates for uh, these atypical transverse uh, fractures uh, associated with bisphosphonate use. We advocate uh, early intervention with the appropriately chosen implant with bone grafting. Thank you.